What is this new moon space race? Why US wants a nuclear reactor on the moon? And what are the geopolitics associated with it? In the next upcoming decade, moon can stop becoming just the exploration destination, but it will be a stage for one of the biggest geopolitical competitions. NASA's aim to set up a lunar reactor by 2030 isn't just about science, but much more than that. Hello everyone, welcome to Vajram and Ravi's Flash News. My name is Shubhangi Singh and today we are going to understand all the aspects related to lunar nuclear reactor which is set which is expected to set up by 2030. So if we talk about this lunar reactor then we have to understand that this is coming from NASA and they are planning to deploy a nuclear fission reactor on our moon by 2030. So this does not is not a random plan but it is rather a proper thought of strategic response against Russia and China because Russia and China already have a joint plan in place for a lunar base that means a base at moon and a power station which is to be set up by 2035. So this is not this plan is not just about science and scientific exploration but rather it is about competition the geopolitical competition where we are seeing a strategic shift where we were just thinking about flags and footprints that who goes on the moon first who explores a certain celestial body first but rather it has moved ahead and become a thing about infrastructure and influence that which country with which kind of alliance can build the infrastructure first and this strategic shift is being seen by the announcement of this particular plan. When we are talking about this particular plan, we have to understand that this is being planned at the south pole of our moon and there is a very specific reason for that as well. The reason it is being planned for the south pole that this particular region is rich in water ice which is very important for fuel, oxygen and life support if a fission reactor is set up there and accordingly infrastructure is to be built. Furthermore, this particular region also has permanent shadowed craters which are absolutely ideal if we are talking about resource extraction as well as there is this situation where they require the constant power. So the particular emphasis on this particular region as well as the timeline of 2030 that means before Russia and China's joint plan is strategically planned because if one country reaches there the alliance can mark up that space. In this very context I would like to also bring Artemis Accord. So if we talk about Artemis Accords basically it is a US led pact with 55 nations and it is about peaceful transparent space exploration. So this brings the geopolitical dimension. So if US is able to reach there first, then there is already the risk of that this area will be kept out if a nation deploys the infrastructure. So if US goes ahead and it deploys their infrastructure first, then the alliance with this, that area would be kept out for other nations which are not part of this alliance. Furthermore, it is also intended, the idea of this nuclear reactor at moon, this is also intended to prevent harmful interference by this particular alliance, which is definitely US led and NASA is taking it up. Furthermore, we also have to see the fact, another dimension that comes in is the strategic stakes involved with particular understanding of moon. So we have to understand whoever goes ahead and establishes the first self-sustaining base, they will automatically get the control or higher control to the high value resources. And this is what might lead to a fragmented lunar map. That means certain regions would be controlled by certain countries and they could be bigger regions as compared to other countries. So the lunar map will be based on who is going to reach first, who is creating the self-sustaining base first and accordingly the regions would be differentiated and there will be definitely restrictions which will be seen based on the zones, alliances, etc. 
and this is what exactly that goes against the idea that space is something that is considered as a global common so if we see enroachment towards moon and such bifurcation then the idea of space being a global common is clearly being undermined and as a potential outcome we will find that in coming times the space rules and norms will be shaped by people who are doing it first not something people who are doing it together and definitely this will this will be a great great disadvantage to the countries who are late entrants to such programs so if we talk about just look at from the perspective of india india has done lunar missions after multiple countries it has been one of those countries who has done it in the most affordable most scientific way but at the same time just because the space would be taken up it would not serve the purpose so it basically will diminish the scope for the countries who are late entrants in such a scenario now let us move ahead and understand that how and why a lunar reactor comes in as a game changer the first aspect was definitely what is stake at stake geopolitically but we also have to give it the <clears throat> we also have to look into the technological significance that brings with it for example we will have a reliable power source basically if we talk about earth we have a 14 earth day lunar night where solar panels are pretty much ineffective but when we are talking about a lunar base then it will enable continuous operation of habitats research labs as well as communication system we will also get to see that there it will be direct support to in site resource utilization if we have power intensive processes to extract oxygen hydrogen and metals from regolith it will reduce the cost of resupply missions especially from earth so if a mission is going from earth and it has to come back then the resupply has a lot of cost and this will reduce that costing as well and this will serve as the initial point the catalyst for the beginning of lunar economy where we will be seeing that mining will take place fuel production will take place and there will be also trade of lunar resources but at the same time when we have such advantages coming in from the here we also have advantages where we get to go beyond moon where we get to research and serve as a testing ground moon will serve as a testing ground for deep space missions where we can easily think about lowering mission risk for mars expeditions and further as well we also have a strategic leverage in this situation a permanent infrastructure could easily translate into geopolitical influence for the countries which are making their presence immediately seen there this is when we get to understand that either moon will become a shared space hub just like the space being a global common or it will be a new geopolitical battlefield which exists outside of earth now a question to you here what do you think are challenges to this particular sort of missions and what are the cautions that need to be kept in mind now that was all from my side thank you so much